Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. Dear friends, in the previous lecture, you got a taste of how touch can convey lots of emotions during speech. My dear friends, the problem with man is that man's ambitions and aspirations are quite unending. We at times vouch for so many things, can we really fulfill all those? Of course not. But while I was talking about touch, I was actually reminded of, which I am going to share with you now, one story from Ovid's Metamorphosis. And this was also related to touch, where one Cyprian sculptor who was actually making a statue and the statue was finally made, the statue was of Galatia and this sculptor was Pygmalion. So, while the statue had finally been made, Pygmalion started imagining and not only imagining, rather he fell in love with the statue. And then came a festival of Aphrodite and on that festival after offering gifts and other things as well, he wished to Aphrodite if Galatia could be brought to life, if he could touch Galatia. Actually, this sculptor fell in love with his own creation and you know this wish was granted and Pygmalion and Galatia, they finally united and they also gave birth to a child and the child born was Paphos. Now, why I am telling you this story is that how human beings have a sort of aspiration, how they have a sort of desire, how they have certain emotions and the emotions can be conveyed. Of course, not all of us can be Pygmalions, but at least we can express our wishes. We can express our wishes in a number of ways, not only through words, but through non-words. Of course, when we speak we make use of words, we make use of sentences, but then we also try to put meaning through some other things and today we are going to talk about that in the lecture entitled para language. Now, you might be thinking, what is this para language? Is it something called language or is it something different from language? The word para language as the word itself suggests, it is para language meaning thereby something that is other than language. Can there be something which can be other than language? Yes, of course, there are so many things, maybe your voice, maybe your emotions that you express and even through your voices because not everyone's voices are alike our voices are different. So, what Maya Angelo says, words mean more than what is set down on paper. It takes the human voice, voice is very important, it takes the human voice to infuse them with shades of deeper meaning. We have actually been saying my dear friends that our words have got meanings. But at the same time, when you speak one word, what meaning do you implant in it? What meaning do you suffuse in it? That actually depends upon the user. How? We shall see in this lecture of today, how the way something is given voice and what sort of voice is given for how long you actually put accent on it that also lends meaning to what a person says. Now, when we say para language, 
this para language can also be known as vocalics vocalics now when we say vocalics naturally it is related to voice and this vocalics the name suggests the study of voice in relation to the language of speech all of us speak my dear friends all of us speak but at the same time when you speak there are certain differences and we shall be discussing those differences which you can utilize when you as a public speaker are addressing a crowd are giving a presentation are giving a speech appearing at the interview participating in a meeting so this uh, para language or vocalics was opened by american linguist george l treacher george l treacher and through this what we intend to study is that not only the role of voice is important rather through voice what do we convey we convey our emotions when you are not in a particular confident state of mind the voice becomes feeble when you are enthusiastic the voice gains a sort of momentum when you are angry your anger is also conveyed through voice because it has got different layers my dear friends when you are sad the voice suddenly is low so we'll we'll try to find out how voice shows a sort of relevance and importance of our idea now how can that be done that can be done through rate i mean not every person speaks at the same rate not everyone can speak the same amount of words in one minute not everyone can have the proper uh, pronunciation actually it also depends upon the volume of your voice upon the pitch of your voice upon the pace of your voice now if in para language we study something about voice what can be the language of the voice as we have been saying that the role of voice plays a pivotal role pivotal role in delivering the intention behind the message so it not only reveals our intentions and the idea but also the emotional value also the emotional value now what are these emotional values and how they can be conveyed thus a proper message delivered in a suitable voice suitable voice creates actually a large effect fine so for an effective voice a training is though required for smooth articulation and clear pronunciation so as i was saying uh, that your voice has an important role to play but your voice actually helps in providing meaning because there are certain threads of meaning which are involved when you express through your own voice as i have been saying that voice plays an important role and through our voice we convey our emotions there have been quite a good number of research studies on uh, the relationship between the voice and the emotions so research findings suggest the following criteria such as speaker's intonation now you might be thinking uh, what is intonation we shall we shall discuss that then prosody vocal effort speaking rate have you not found that if you go to attend a lecture after some time you want to come out of that you want to escape why because the speaker could not interest you since the voice was only monotonous fine it is only one way no it has got a single tone there's no variety in it and that that is what we say that when somebody speaks a sentence the sentence itself should convey the meaning and how is that possible that is possible only when you bring the proper intonation voice actually has the potential 
to reflect the speaker's emotional state, fine, to reflect the speaker's emotional state. So, lexical ambiguities, I mean all of us speak words, but we are all familiar with the expression and with the reality that one word may have different meanings the way they are spoken. So, here uh, the role of voice becomes very important. So, sometimes when you speak a particular word, there can be at times ambiguity and these lexical ambiguities of the spoken word are bridged by proper equipment of all these, I mean intonation, prosody, vocal effort and speaking rate. Let us go back a little bit. Say for example, you find here on the right hand side, there are three sentences and all these sentences have the same words, but then do they not convey different meaning? Say for example, if I say, I did not say you are stupid. Now, look at this sentence and again the other sentence say, I did not say you were stupid. Now, do you not find that the accent shifts? I did not say you were stupid. So, you, you might have seen how the emphasis is shifted and that actually tells a lot about how we can shift the emphasis from one word to another. The words of the sentences are the same, but the meanings vary. In the first sentence, when you emphasize on the word say, you actually mean to uh, convey uh, that you did not say, meaning thereby you do not believe or you did not say, you did not assert, fine. So, you, you did not say you were stupid, I did not say you were stupid, meaning thereby I did not say about you, maybe one can think that I did say about somebody else. And in the third one, I did not say you were stupid. So, in all these, the words which have already been emphasized can be substituted and there lies the intention of the speaker. So, you will realize that when we talk about para language, we actually express our emotions and we provide different threads of meaning even to a particular word uh, with the help of the nuances we create through our voice, through our volume. And then comes the delivery. The delivery of emotions appropriates the speaker's intention to audience with much emphasis. I mean you can come across different sorts of speakers. Some of the speakers uh, will always speak just in one tone. The others may have a variety. The others may take care of the audience members also. But then speakers who are well appreciated are those who can bring variety in their speech, who can actually understand the needs of the listeners, the needs of the receivers. Some people may speak very fast, but then this fast delivery actually is a sort of betrayal with the audience members. Because among audience members, there are people who have different sort of understanding, they have different sorts of knowledge they come from different backgrounds. So, if one speaks at such a speed where there can be a proper coordination between what the speaker speaks and what the learners receive, then perhaps our speech or our talk uh, can become successful. So, and some people while they are describing something, addressing something, indicating something, and if there comes a moment when emotion is required and if there are no emotions attached to your tone, then perhaps it becomes a useless affair. So, we come across certain things which are to be conveyed in the proper manner for proper understanding and that is why voice and emotions, they are co-related. Now, we are talking about intonation. 
Now, when we say intonation, what exactly we mean is the pitch variation. Now, you might be thinking, how can we always remember that we have to vary our pitch? My dear friends, whatever you speak is actually a bundle of your ideas. In whatever role you may be, a salesman, a teacher, an insurance agent or whatsoever. So, you know well, when you have to appeal to the senses or to the emotions of your receivers and there naturally you will vary the pitch. Say for example, if I say having said that, now I feel that I need to be more clear than I should have been. I know what your needs are and that is why it becomes my prime duty rather to address your emotions in a way that can really result. But if the same thing is uh, said in a very aggressive manner, naturally they will not convey the proper emotions. So, the speaker's efforts to shift the pitch with each utterance of a word offers detailed information to the listener. In this regard, I am reminded of what a famous writer Mark Twain says, while he says uh, in connection with how a person should speak in order to give home or drive home the message, he says that there is much role of silence and pauses in our communication and he says the right word may be effective, but no word was as effective as a rightly timed pause experienced speakers know where to put the pause, where to put silence, where to be aggressive, where to be quite equal, where to be a little bit silent. So, the speech melody of a person's utterance is called intonation. Many of you as children, you might have uh, been taught how to recite a poem, how to utter a dialogue. And when you utter a dialogue, you will find the emotions of that expression, they actually have to be conveyed. If it is captured mechanically, we can find that at times your tone will rise, at times your tone will fall. And with the rise and fall of your tone, you are actually implanting emotions in it. In English, the intonation is usually observed in the dichotomy of rising and falling tone. There is another category also that we call neutral tone, fine. During the moments of grief, during the moments of sadness, fine, naturally the tone becomes very neutral. But sometimes when you seek a permission, sometimes when you are trying to address something, interrogate, naturally you will find there will be a shift in your tone. Let us look at this sentence. Where are you going? I am finally going home. You can look at the stress. You can look at the emphasis. Would you like to have a cup of tea with me? Now, see how there has been a shift. Now, let us also talk about some determinants of para language. Ferdinand Poetos in his book on nonverbal communication across discipline mentions different factors where he says that they can differ biologically, physiologically, psychologically, occupationally and socio-culturally. So, biologically is related to age, sex, fine and your uh, vocal bland size, then physiologically long term malfunctions, pitch disorders. I mean, not every person can have everything right, is not it? And that also may affect one's vocal characteristics or one's paralanguage. Psychologically, sometimes you become, you speak very loudly, sometimes in a state of depression, the voice becomes low. Occupationally, there are also variations and these dynamics at times help too much. You will find all the successful people, they know when to speak what in what tone. And then there is socio-culturally where different occasions demand different sort 
of voices. When you go to a celebration, the voice is very jovial, isn't it? Uh, at times, there are certain cultural stereotypes and styles, fine. Uh, even, even as a public speaker, you will find that you will get several occasions when there is an occasion for celebration and you are to give uh, a sort of speech. But there are also occasions when uh, there you are going to speak or give a small talk uh, in a condolence meeting, naturally your voice will become low or uh, the words will have a different sort of tinge, my different. So, when we talk about the features of our voice, what we can take into considerations are volume, rate, pitch, pronunciation and then silence and pauses. Volume is uh, the loudness, fine. And rate is the number of words that you speak per minute. Everyone cannot speak the same amount of words as other successful people can. But then in normal situations you will find people speaking 120 to 130 words per minute. But depending upon uh, the crowd's background, uh, their educational level and all and the profession you are in, naturally uh, the rate varies. You may at times be able to speak 140 to 160 words per minute and then comes pitch if you know how to vary your pitches. Most of the successful speakers have become successful because they know how to vary their pitch. And then comes pronunciation my dear friends, it is very difficult. Uh, for all of us uh, to have the pronunciation uh, that is of an established speaker whether it is a British or it is an American uh, or but then in most of the conditions what actually should be attempted at is there ought to be clarity. So, when it comes to loudness and softness in terms of intonation that you must well know my dear friend then uh, the variation at the voice level all is that you should try to aim at clarity, audibility. We have seen many speakers who speak and they listen to themselves only. What good is such a speaker if the speaker is not able to convince the crowd, address the crowd, gather admirations and laurels from the crowd. For that all you need to do much in advance is the awareness of the acoustics of the room, I mean the setting of the room. That is why you might find that many seasoned speakers, they try to examine their own voices uh, at certain gadgets and uh, the acoustics of the room, the way the arrangement is made, physical arrangement we have already talked about in some lecture, fine. And then also ensure that your voice is engaging and not imposing, fine. If you really try to impose your thoughts on other people, they would not be interested. So, what you need to do? You actually need to make your voice and make your speech or talk in a conversational tone and in order to make it conversational, uh, there are certain other requirements which we shall be discussing when we shall be talking about uh, the vocal characteristics and all. Now, a little bit about pronunciation which is actually a very difficult and a challenging area especially for uh, us as Indian speakers. Proper pronunciation is determined still by effective articulatory control. We all know that English is not our language and we have different sorts of languages in a country like India where all of us bring the regional pulse of our first language. So, when you are speaking for English audience, see to it that at least you can maintain a sort of Englishness. That is, if we can at least practice received pronunciation RCP, received pronunciation. Now, in one of the papers by Poetos, uh, what it said is ideal articulatory voice control is of a slow tempo, anything under O2 it qualify as over slow unnatural control. So, neither you have to be too slow nor you have to be too fast, fine. There are certain other factors which also decide your pronunciation and uh, these factors are laryngeal, pharyngeal, lingual, labiofacial, but for all these you actually need to have a little bit of training in phonetics where you can understand how a particular sound is produced, is not it? For that 
in most of the dictionaries you can find just in the beginning of the dictionary we have IPA that is International Phonetic Alphabet. So, if you can practice that, if you can uh, see that these, these are like uh, symbols fine and if these symbols you know and with the help of those when you go to the dictionary and pronounce then perhaps you can train yourself to become a better speaker. Of course, nowadays uh, there are uh, several other things available, there are softwares available fine where you can with your own uh, uh, help uh, you can with the help of these softwares uh, you can in many institutions they have language lab facilities where you can just record your own speech or your own words sentences and you can find the accuracy level. Now, as we are talking about the speech delivery, the normal delivery I mean especially for a crowd who can understand is 130 to 150 words per minute that is the ideal. However, it can vary as I have been saying fine. The primary purpose of the speech is to achieve a controlled pace and for that you must be having a sort of awareness of the audience. We have already discussed in one of the lectures about audience awareness. So, every speaker whether novice or experienced must be aware of the audience's background and this time duration of the presentation because sometimes it so happens that you are allotted 20 minutes or 30 minutes and you, there is no proper balance between your time and the content. So, either you overstep or are you lag behind. So, if you can try to attempt a proper uh, um, commingling between the time allotted and between the content then perhaps you will be able to do that. Of course, this is very difficult my dear friend, but then uh, with practice one can always do it. I was talking about international phonetic alphabet here uh, on the right hand side you can find how in literature when we teach our students uh, poetry and scansen uh, then we tell them how to divide uh, the sentence or the stanzas uh, into uh, certain threads of thoughts and then uh, try to find out fine. So, our vocal cords often vibrate when we uh, pronounce. So, in this we come across certain inflections, certain feelings and the speech variation uh, as I have been saying is very essential. So, where to put the stress? You will often find that there can be sometimes stress, there can be sometimes unstress. So, you need to understand uh, it, but then it actually will require a lot of time for you. Initially, you may have problem, but my sound advice to you is please look at uh, the uh, symbols, phonetic symbols and that will help you achieve a better uh, pronunciation. Now, some uh, stress should also be given on silence and pauses. You might have seen that when a person speaks, he speaks continuously, but that speaking continuously is not a wise idea, otherwise you will leave your uh, listeners behind. So, what is required is silence and pauses. There are times when you feel that you need to separate one thread of thought from the other and you, you need to break. So, this break may either be silence when it is for a, lo for a longer time it is silence, when it is for a shorter time it is called a pause. So, elongated pause is converted into a silence. Silence speaks as I have been saying that silence reveals your own faith, silence reveals your own determination as a speaker. Silence also reveals so many things my dear friend. Of course, silence can be interpreted uh, culturally because there are certain differences culturally also when it comes to silence. But when as a speaker you need to maintain silence and pauses very effectively. Silence as a form of communication has various implications with respect to the culture addressed. In this regard we can say that as a speaker many people often think that if I uh, suddenly become silent what will people think of me. My dear friends as a speaker it is beneficial to you because it will ignite your thought, it will allow you to review where you were and what is to be said now and silence will also bring reactions from the crowds. It will also allow you some time for yourself for a sort of introspection as to where you are and silence can also help in decision making. You might uh, find that 
careful, expert, seasoned speakers know well where to silence. At times, even a particular sentence is spoken and the silence is made, it actually allows uh, the receivers or the audience members to interpret or to extract the meaning out of it. Of course, as a speaker, you can also find uh, that there are certain lapses, there are certain shortcomings uh, when we try to articulate and these can be categorized. This also uh, varies from person to person. Of course, it is very difficult to control all these throatiness. I mean, everyone's voice is unique. So, in some people's voices, you can come across that there is a sort of throatiness. I mean, there are resonances in your voices. Then, breathiness. I mean, when you are trying to take a breath, so the passage of air uh, is constricted. And then, some people are also suffering from a sort of nasalization. Some people also feel a sort of harshness. Then, sometimes your voice becomes muffled. Sometimes, it is hoarse where you can realize a sort of inflammation of your uh, voice box. So, all these shortcomings may be there, but then with see a practice, you can overcome all these. Now, having discussed all about these para language, the time has come to take away some out of it, so that next time when you go to speak, you can realize all these things. Para language as the name suggests is not only voice, but it is something other than voice. It is a language, but it supports the speaker's idea and intention. It posits itself as a perfect tool for persuasion. A vocal person seems to present himself as more confident and bold. Human voice reflects emotions. We have been saying as Longfellow once said, human soul is audible, not visible. We will we'll take uh, one quote by H. W. Longfellow before we uh, come to end it. But then a voice which is actually filled with genuine emotion is capable of forming and connecting social bonds easily. My dear friends, voice is important and voicelessness is also important at time. So, this voicelessness can, can sometimes be expressed in the form of silence and pauses. But in order to bring a sort of combination between silence and pauses and to allow yourself to make your voice more established and audible, let us take some cues from what H. W. Longfellow, the American poet, says in his 1836 novel named Hyperion. Actually, there is a story behind it uh, that H. W. Uh, Longfellow uh, wrote this uh, novel Hyperion when he was in a very depressed state. And in this novel, the hero uh, Fleming, who has actually lost one of his friends, is going to Germany. And there it is, it is the account of the travel. Rather, in this novel, there is an unsuccessful courtship also about the writer's desire uh, to get the hand of uh, Nathan Appleton, who actually refused his, ad, his advances uh, for a marriage. Now, the line that Longfellow speaks in Hyperion is all related to voice and that is why it is more significant when he says, oh, how wonderful is the human voice. It is indeed the organ of the soul. The intellect of man sits enshrined visibly upon his forehead and in his eye and the heart of man is written upon, upon his countenance. But the soul reveals itself in the voice only as God revealed himself to the prophet in the still small voice and in a voice from the burning bush. The soul of a man is audible. The soul of a man is audible, not visible. A sound alone betrays the flowing of the eternal fountain visible to man. My dear friends, I hope that your sound, your voice does not betray the flowing of the content that you have organized so systematically. So, let your voice in the form of para language speak so that audience members can be kept intact. 
with this, let me come to the end of this talk. Thank you very much. I wish you all a good day.